Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club right now. For just $5 a month, you can practice conversation skills with English learners from around the world, native English tutors, and myself. I've already noticed massive improvements in our members' confidence and ability over the past few weeks. The club takes place every Tuesday at 12 pm and 6 pm UK time, and in 2023, we will be adding extra days and times. But be quick, the price will be increasing in January. Click the link in the description or head to www.patreon.com forward slash thinking in English to join today. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Surrounding yourself with English is the best way to improve, learn and progress. But how can you do this when you don't live in the UK, USA or any English speaking country? Keep listening and you'll find out a lot of useful information about language immersion and how to do it yourself. You can find a full and free transcript over on the Thinking in English blog. Check out my Instagram page and YouTube page, both called Thinking in English. Leave a like, a rating or review of the podcast wherever you are listening right now. And join the Thinking in English Conversation Club every Tuesday. Link is in the description. Here is today's episode. People always ask me the best way to learn English quickly. And the truth is, I wish I knew the answer. I've been studying Japanese on and off for over six years now. And I've struggled with motivation and gaining enough vocabulary to become a truly advanced speaker. We all want a method that will magically speed up the English learning process, to go from nothing to everything with the least amount of effort possible. People and companies always try to sell you this dream. Language learning apps or online courses, for example, will tell you that you can become fluent in just 30 days or with only a few minutes of study every day. Is this really the case? For some people, maybe. But for most of us, we are not so lucky. I've tried a lot of different things to learn Japanese and Chinese, but let's stick with Japanese today. I've bought textbooks, textbooks on grammar, exam preparation, vocabulary textbooks, reading comprehension textbooks, textbooks on sayings and onomatopoeia, so sounds that become words, textbooks on the Japanese alphabet and textbooks on writing practice. I've had probably over 15 Japanese textbooks in the last six years. I've signed up to apps. One app I forgot I subscribed to until they charged me $100 a few months ago which was a surprise. I've taken Japanese classes, free Japanese classes from a community centre, private one-on-one classes with a tutor in her house, private classes online on italki, professional group classes in London and university classes at Waseda University in Tokyo. I've used language exchange apps and attended in-person language exchanges in both Japan and in the UK. I've written Japanese diaries, listened to Japanese music, watched Japanese movies and TV shows, and downloaded Japanese podcasts. I've tried a lot of different things over the past six years. Some things worked, some things didn't work, and some things were a complete waste of time and money. Is there a magic method to learning a language? No, I don't think so. But there is something that will definitely make learning languages easier. Immersion. I mentioned I had been learning Japanese for six years. I only started learning after getting a job in the country 
and had no interest in Japan or the language before I moved there in 2016. Since 2016, I've lived in Japan for around three and a half years of the past six years. And this gave me a, an advantage to learning the language. I was able to immerse myself. At the same time as taking classes at a community centre and spending hours and hours studying my textbooks, I was able to surround myself with the language. And this is the key principle of language immersion. Immersion learning focuses on learning English, or any language, in the most natural way. It means to build your vocabulary and knowledge of English through natural exposure, by interacting with English in your everyday life. By surrounding yourself with the language you are studying, you can have constant exposure to learning. If you just study English in a classroom, this is not immersion. But if you live in an English world, speaking English with your family, watching English movies, listening to English podcasts, reading English books, cooking with English recipes, learning English becomes easier. Now, it's easy for me to say this, learning English becomes easier. But does it really? Well, let's take a look at some of the research. Language learning immersion, in the traditional sense, occurs in two main ways. Through bilingual education at school or a study abroad experience. And there are a number of different studies that show students who study languages in these immersive settings reach higher language levels than students who are educated in a non-immersive setting. For example, King Kinginger in 2011 shows how study abroad experiences are enhanced through immersive learning, and Cummins in, in 2009 found similar things with bilingual education. However, immersive learning is not enough by itself. It works best in highly motivated students. Students who are motivated to join the culture of the language. For instance, an English learner who would be most motivated to learn English when they intended to join an English-speaking culture. For example, live or work in the UK, make friends in the USA, something like that. This is why we learn languages best in the country where that language was spoken. You would learn English more effectively in the UK or USA, and I should learn Japanese more effectively in Japan. When I lived in Japan, I wanted and needed to speak Japanese, not for fun, but because I wanted to speak to people and share my thoughts and opinions. I wanted to form relationships and friendships. And by being in an, in an immersive environment, by being surrounded by the language, I had the opportunity to learn all the time while I was the most motivated. For English learners, the same is true. If you are motivated to study the language because you want or need to live, work or study in an English-speaking environment, your motivation should be higher. In addition, immersion seems to be especially powerful for young children. If you have listened to my episode with previous podcast guest Honoka, I'll try to remember to leave a link in the transcript, you will realise that she achieved her excellent level of English thanks to childhood immersion. She was raised in a bilingual environment, watching English language TV and reading English books, despite living in Yokohama, Japan. Immersion is a good strategy, that is clear. But is it possible to do at home? It is impossible for many people, and many of you listening right now, to move to an English-speaking country and fully immerse yourselves in the language. 
you have to think and worry about money, work, families, visas and more. But don't worry, it is possible to achieve some level of immersion at home in your own country. I want to give you a few tips on how you can immerse yourself in English. But first, let's briefly discuss the difference between immersion and submersion. Immerse and submerge are similar words but with an important difference. Submerge, a verb, to submerge, suggests that something is put fully underwater or, in our case, under the weight of a culture, a language. While immerse doesn't imply this, but it also doesn't exclude it. To illustrate, imagine being in a bath. If you are submerged in the bath, your whole body is underwater, including your head and face. And this means you can't breathe, you're completely under the water. If you are immersed in the bath, your body may be underwater, but your head could be free, above the water, breathing easily. And this is also the case for language learning. There is a difference between submerging yourself completely in a language and immersing yourself in a language. A mistake people make with language immersion is that they submerge themselves into the culture and language rather than immersing themselves. English learners may try to read incredibly difficult novels rather than starting with graded readers or children's books. You may watch TV shows you don't like just because they are in English. I know people who change the language of their phone but then they didn't know how to use the phone's features because they couldn't speak the language. You have to give yourself enough space to breathe. Think of a swimming pool. Swimming pools will have a shallow end for less confident swimmers and a deep end for experienced people. If you jumped in the deep end with no ability to swim, you would struggle and maybe drown. When immersing yourself, make sure you surround yourself with English that is of your ability or a little more difficult. In 2016, I moved to Japan with zero Japanese. I didn't immediately try to discuss philosophy in Japanese or write a scientific paper. Of course not. In fact, I didn't even try to have conversations with strangers in Japanese for the first maybe six months of living in the country. Instead, I studied incredibly hard. Every day I would use my textbooks and twice a week take classes at the community centre. But at the same time, I would try to immerse myself even as a beginner. I would sit in a local cafe or restaurant and listen to conversations. Now, I couldn't understand anything, not at all. I was a beginner. I was listening to the sounds people were making. I was trying to hear the syllables of the words. Notice where one word ended and the next stopped. And then repeat these sounds in my head. Because this is one of the key challenges of learning a language. Is mastering the sounds and way of speaking in that language. And I still do this today. I still sound out words when people say them to me in my own head. Eventually, I was able to increase my language ability and I could start reading books and watching TV shows in Japanese. But I read books that I could manage. In English, I like to read things like philosophy or history or science. In Japanese, I started with graded readers designed for learners then I moved on to children's books for Japanese children and parallel readers, both in English and in Japanese. Even a few weeks ago, I was sat in a Japanese cafe in Tokyo reading a children's version of Gulliver's Travels. And when I watched TV in Japanese, I watched first using English subtitles. 
immersing yourself in a language doesn't mean straight away cutting out your native language and only using English, for example. It means to put yourself in an environment where you can learn effectively and naturally. Think about your own level and how you can add English into your life. It took me years to walk into a Japanese bar with confidence and start speaking to a stranger. But I used to join language exchanges and conversation clubs in the first year or two of learning to practice and become confident. Find the best method for your language level and don't jump in at the deep end. So, can you achieve immersion at home? Well, yes. I mentioned my friend and previous podcast guest Honoka already in this episode. She is a fluent English speaker thanks to the immersive environment she was raised in. Well, how can you achieve this too? Challenge yourself, but not too much. The most important step to language immersion is surrounding yourself with English. This depends on you and your interests, but it could be English TV shows, movies, podcasts, music, books. You could download an English language news app and get your news in English. You could read an English newspaper every day. You could change your video game language to English. You could message your friends in English. You could write an English diary or journal. You could cook using an English language recipe book. There are countless ways to surround yourself with English. I am currently trying to make thinking in English a, a more immersive experience for all of you listening. As well as hearing my voice every day and reading the transcripts, I also want you all to comment on my Spotify, Instagram and YouTube. I run a conversation club, a very cheap conversation club. At the moment, it's just $5 a month. So you can all discuss the episodes and other topics in English. And I have a Discord server for my subscribers who can join and talk with each other in English. People from all around the world, Poland, Japan, Brazil, talking to each other in English. Maybe you could try commenting on other podcasts and YouTube videos. Maybe try to take an online course in English. A free one from Coursera would be an excellent way to increase the amount of English in your life. Speak, listen, write and read in English as often as possible. That is immersion. By surrounding yourself with the English language, you are forcing yourself to use it and become more confident and comfortable. You will also start to copy and understand the language on a deeper level. As I mentioned already, you need to be realistic when immersing yourself. If you need to read the news for your job, maybe don't use English language newspapers. You might be slow or make mistakes. If you are just starting to read English books, don't go and try and read some advanced philosophy. Surround yourself with English that is just a little more advanced than your level. You want English to be challenging, but you don't want English to be impossible. Keep studying. The next tip is to keep studying. I have learned this from personal experience, both as a success and as a failure. At the same time as watching English movies and TV shows, listening to English music and podcasts, and immersing yourself in English, you need to also be studying the language. Keep attending classes or using your textbook. Notice the mistakes you make, the words you learn, or the sentences with interesting grammar, and study these things at the end of the day. The first time I lived in Japan, my language ability consistently and constantly improved. I studied every day while immersing myself in the culture. The second time I lived in Japan, just recently, my language ability d didn't improve that much. Despite immersing myself all the time, 
In fact, I immersed myself more than the first time, by far. I had Japanese friends who only spoke Japanese, and I would go to cafes and bars and speak to strangers all the time. I would speak Japanese every day, but I rarely took classes. I rarely picked up a textbook, and I didn't improve or reach the level I wanted. Unless you are incredibly gifted, you need to combine immersion with studying. Be interested. The next tip is to immerse yourself in an interesting environment. Do you like comedy in your own language? Yes? Then try to watch some English comedies. Do you like listening to science podcasts? Yes? Then try listening to science podcasts in English. Do you like video games? Then play video games in English. Think of what you like to do and then do it in English. That is the key to avoiding feeling submerged in the language. If you have no interest in the news in your own language, are you sure you're going to enjoy reading it in English? If you don't like horror movies in your own language, you probably won't like them in English. Do the things you like and don't force yourself to do things you don't like. I always remember my colleagues when I was teaching English in Japan telling me that I needed to watch Japanese anime. It's the best way to learn, they told me. I had never watched a single episode of anime before I moved to Japan, but everyone told me I needed to watch it to learn Japanese. So I tried. I tried watching the first series I found on Netflix. I can't remember the name, but it was one of the few on Netflix with English subtitles. So I tried watching this series and I was bored. Then, a few months later, I went to the movie theatre to watch an anime movie and I fell asleep. Although I've now found some Japanese shows that I do like, at that time I had no interest in it and it didn't help me to learn. But I found that I enjoyed turning the news on every day and watching that, or at least listening to it in the background, because I like the news, I like current affairs, I like current events. By doing things you find interesting, you will be able to keep a higher level of motivation and find it easier to study. You will be able to immerse yourself more successfully in a language. So here is today's final thought. Language immersion is one of the best ways to improve your language. By surrounding yourself with English, you will notice real improvements in the learning experience. Of course, you need to surround yourself with the right kind of English and be motivated to improve. Have you ever learned English in an immersive environment? Have you ever studied abroad or lived in a foreign country? How do you include English in your home life? Or do you include English in your home life? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify, a comment on the Thinking in English blog where the transcript is, or send me a message on Instagram. I love to hear from all of you. My Instagram has just hit 10,000 followers, which is incredible. Can we get to 11,000 before the end of the year? I hope so. So please go and subscribe or follow me over on uh, Thinking in English podcast on Instagram. And I'm also on YouTube. And we are incredibly close to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So click the link in the description and go and subscribe on YouTube. We currently have two main series on YouTube. One is a full audio version of the podcast, so the exact same thing you're listening to right now, but on YouTube. And the second is a read-along version of our podcasts. So the read-along version is extra special because you can read the transcript and see some vocabulary, facts and images on the screen at the same time as listening. 
So go over to YouTube, check out the different videos, give me recommendations on what kind of videos you would like to see on YouTube in the future. Um, and if you love thinking in English, join the Patreon. In fact, even if you kind of like thinking in English, join the Conversation Club. Every Tuesday at 12pm and 6pm UK time, we run a, a Conversation Club. In fact, I'm recording this just a few hours after our second Conversation Club on Tuesday the, uh, the 13th of December. We had an incredible Conversation Club today. Our topic was the year 2022. So we discussed our experiences and our challenges and our achievements over the past year. We talked about everything from Indonesian horror movies to learning tennis to listening to thinking in English. Right? We talked about so many interesting things. There were members from Japan, Indonesia, China, Taiwan, members from Italy, Germany, Poland, Russia, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico. People from all over the world joined. So if you're interested in improving your English, please consider joining the Conversation Club. And I want you all to join now. It's only $5 right now. I will be increasing the price in January. The $5 price was only supposed to be for a few months, but I, I've left it going because I want people to join. So please join now. In January, the price will probably be three times more expensive, maybe $15 a month, which is still very cheap for a conversation club every week. Plus, you'll get bonus episodes and extra content for that $15. But join now if you don't want to spend $15. Join now for the $5 version. And you'll be helping me to turn this into my career and to make thinking in English bigger and better. So go over to patreon.com forward slash thinking in English or click the link in the description. And even if you don't want to subscribe to Patreon, please just share the podcast with your friends. Please leave, leave me a rating, like some of my posts on Instagram. Just send me a nice message because it's scary when you're starting a new business when you're trying to do something by yourself and the support from all of you people subscribing to me on patreon people you know sending me lovely messages is the most Im important thing and in fact i have a few extra slots open on patreon right now for the people who want to pay the highest amount of money and have a conversation with me every month so if you do have a little bit of extra money and you love thinking in english please consider paying that extra amount which will also be increasing in price in in january so it's better to join now than to join in january but please join in january as well maybe um so i hope you all have a great day and i'll see you next time goodbye